so what we're going to do first is we're going to install the MetaQuest Link app. Just click download app on the right side and just click save. Once you get the Oculus setup.exe, just go to the initial setup, just click yes. And you will see the screen. You just click get started, click agree, click install now, and it will install the Link software. Now once it shows that it's installed, just click on next. And now you get a login to your meta account. Now once that's done, you will ask you for where you want to choose the default download location for your MetaQuest Link Store app purchases. I would honestly just put it on the C drive, but you can put it anywhere else if you want to by clicking this button. Just click continue. Now we're going to choose which headset we're using to link up our Quest to the MetaQuest Link app. So for me, I would use the Quest 2. Just select this and click continue. Now we have two connection methods over here. For most, we're going to do link first, and then I'll check out AirLink after. To use the link cable, you just plug in the link cable to the USB 3.0 port on your computer. Once you click continue over here, it will ask you to connect your head plug in into the headset. Now what we're going to do here is, is it says here that, that I have to enable link. Just click enable. Now over here it will say that your device setup is still in progress. Please take off your headset and consider what setup on the MetaQuest Link app on your computer. So now on the computer it will show that the headset is finally connected. So you'll see this check mark icon. Just click continue. And it will ask you to check your cable connection. Just click test connection and it will calculate on if your cable is connected properly or not or if your cable can be working with the headset itself now it says here that it's, it has a compatible connection so just click continue now it asks you to put on your headset to start using link you may need to use the shortcut in quick settings to stop using air link first so now we're going to go back to the headset so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the quick settings and you should see pc over here just click link over here and click launch and now we're in the oculus dashboard now you could do whatever you want here you could click on here to disable the link you could go over here to explore to go to the store page the library is over here as, as you can see there's like nothing in here yet but you can always add in more games if you want you could also go to the store page by going over here and you can see all the games and apps that you can run on the oculus app there's the social tab notifications settings and this is where you can change if you want to use the quest 2 microphone or the quest 2 headphones or just the headset itself you can go to guardian and click adjust guardian to change your floor level and go back to graphics and you can turn on anti-aliasing and high quality panel rendering you can go to the dash tab to turn on do not disturb and it says here that on the oculus or meta button long press if enabled it requires you to press and hold to open dash with the oculus or meta button instead of just press if you go to experiments you can hide the panel controls and you can put a watch on the left wrist of your avatar if you go to social it won't let you go anything here it will just tell you to please remove your headset and make your changes in the meta questing pc app if you go to the, to the desktop icon over here it will let you choose which monitor you want so if i do monitor one you'll be able to see what monitor one looks like if you do the same thing for monitor two you will see what monitor two looks like you can go to the avatar editor which will only make it so it will open the editor in the browser you can add desktop panels over here so let's say i want to add an obs and i can add this over here and if i use the grip button i can hold this i can hold the grip button and move this anywhere i want so i can put it on the left side if i want to if i put my controller near this you'll be able to access this side you'll be able to see how much battery the, the headset has how much battery each of your controller has so if i put it if i get my left controller real quick you'll be able to see how much battery the left controller ha has you'll be able to change your microphone volume from here and your speaker volume the button here on the left side just lets you reset the view so just clicking it this button over here does a screenshot so if i what well, it will put on a countdown timer and then it will do a screenshot and it's saved to your pictures folder. And over here is for reporting abuse. We can do a creative. We can create a video recording to help our trained safety specialist see and hear what's wrong. Other people won't be able to see when you're recording. And that's about it about the dash. Now we gotta get this running with Steam VR. As you can see, if once we're back to the computer, we are asked on how do you want to open this file where we did a screenshot. If you click OK on the Microsoft Photos app, we will see what actually happened on the screenshot in a square 1024 by 120 1024 image. We can close this. And we can close this. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add in Steam VR support. So what we need to do is make sure to open up Steam. I'm hoping that you've already logged into Steam because this is just a tutorial on how to get Steam VR working. Go to the store page, type in Steam VR, and you should see this. Click on it and click on play game. 
This will make you install the Steam VR application. Just click install and it will start downloading. I give it some time for it to download all this all of the stuff that it needs for Steam VR to download. Once it's done downloading, you can just click launch on Steam VR. As you can see now on the headset, just opening up Steam VR does put us to the Steam home menu. Just give it a second so it loads up and then everything will go fine. We have these controllers now on the here, and you can see here that on the headset itself, it says toggle dashboard on the three lines menu, on the three lines button. Just click it, and you get to the Steam VR menu. Click it again for it to disappear. To move around to the Steam VR home, just use the left thumbstick on your controller. Just put it just here, and just aim it wherever you want. If you don't have enough space to look around where you want to go, you could use either the left and right thumbstick and then move to the left or right so you can do a snap move. Once the Steam VR is open, you can now open up whatever Steam VR game you want. But for now, we will do the other methods. Next method is we're going to do the air link. So to disconnect, you can just click the Oculus button on the controller, which will open the Oculus dashboard. You can just click Quit App to quit Steam VR. Now I can go over here to the very left side that says Disable Link. Click that and click disable and you'll be brought back to the quest 2 home screen on the computer the next thing we're going to do is air link click on the arrow on the bottom right and right click the meta icon click devices as you can see over here it already shows up our quest 2 but to pretend that we're going to be pairing another quest 2 to the air link we're just going to click this and we're just going to remove this headset to remove the headset just unplug the cable and it will say not connected on the headset click it and click remove device and click OK. Now you remove the headset. To add AirLink, click add headset, click on which headset you have, for me it's the Quest 2, click continue, click AirLink and click continue. Now it will tell you, put on your headset and go to settings, system, link to enable link and then launch AirLink using the shortcut and quick settings. On the headset, we're going to go to the quick settings and you will see this option called link. Click on link. And you should see this toggle over here that says use air link. Enable that toggle and you should see your desktop. Click on pair. On the desktop, you'll see the air link pairing thing. Make sure that the code matches with your headset. If it matches the code, click confirm on the desktop. Now it says here pairing code confirm and put on your headset and continue. Now it sees here that your, your PC is over here connected and it meets your requirements. So you just click launch. We are going into air link. In a few moments, we are now connected via a link. Now this will look the exact same thing just like what we did with the link cable. Except this time, if you go over here to the left side, it now says air link instead of disable link. Going to air link settings, you'll be able to change your bit rate either dynamically or by fix. I would honestly just leave it in dynamic because it really depends on your Wi-Fi. And you can choose the setting that matches on what your Wi-Fi can be able to handle. For me, since I have 5 GHz Wi-Fi, I wouldn't touch this setting. I would just touch it on the debug tool, which we I will show later on. This time we're going to be accessing the Oculus debug tool so we could change our encoding bit rate settings using AirLink or the link cable. Just press Windows key E, go to this PC, C drive, program files, Oculus support, Oculus diagnostics, and Oculus debug tool. I will change the in dynamic bitrate max to 150 and the dynamic bitrate offset to 50. And I would also change the asynchronous space warp to disabled. Now once that's done, you can close this and then you can pair it with Oculink, I mean, sorry, you can pair it with AirLink or with the link cable and then you should see a big difference on the encoding uh, bitrate as well. It does make a huge difference as well in AirLink. So once that's done, we can go back to our computer. On our computer, if you go to devices, it should show our quest over here. Now I can go to Steam VR and click launch. Now over here, we have a notification here that says now playing Steam VR home. We can put our headset in. Now over here on link, we are now in AirLink. Now we can do whatever we did before, but this time, we are completely wireless without the cable. Now to disconnect from AirLink, just click the Oculus button on the controller, click Quit App on Steam VR, and you can see here if you click on AirLink, we are able to quit AirLink over here and just press Quit. And now you're back to the Quest dashboard. As I will say by the way, is whenever you're using Quest Link or AirLink, you could go to your device over here and click Graphics Preferences and you can change the refresh rate and the rendering resolution to what you want. For me, for my computer, since it's not really a high-end computer, I would only choose 80 hertz and I'll turn this automatic thing off and change it to 1.0x. But you can change it to whatever you want depending on how fast your computer can handle. Once you changed it, just click save and restart. 
This will restart the MetaQuest Link app. Just give it a second, and now you're back in MetaQuest Link. Now, once you're done with that, you can go back to your headset. Now, you can click on Link and click Launch. And then, but this time, you will be able to have your own graphics preferences. For me, I changed it to 80 hertz and 1.0x render resolution. So now it should feel a lot more better. Now it would now feel like you're running on 80 hertz, and the resolution would also look a lot better. Next thing we're gonna do is so we're gonna click Airlink, and this time we're gonna use a thing that I usually use the most compared to Airlink, and I think is better than Airlink. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna use the Steam Link method. To get Steam Link, just go to the Meta Horizon store, go to the search bar, and type in Steam Link. Over here, you just click this and click Get. For me, I already installed it, so I'll just click Start, and it will open the Steam Link. Over here, you gotta choose which PC you have. For me, it's this one, and I'll just click Connect and it will ask for the pairing code. If you go to the PC, it will see it's asking for the pairing code. Just put in the pairing code that it shows up on the quest and click continue. Over here on the quest, we're already connecting via Steam Link. Meta boom. You're in Steam VR. Easy. It will open up Steam VR Home. So just give it a sec. Now we're in Steam VR Home. And then we still have the same controls. So we can go use the left thumbstick to move around and then use any of the left thumbsticks or the right thumbstick too. And then you move it to the left or right and then you can snap look. This time, if you press the Oculus button, it doesn't show the Oculus dashboard. Instead, opening the Quest dashboard. So you can choose which apps you want to overlay in the background. For example, I have the Meta Horizon Store, the Quick Settings, and the Record feature. You press the Oculus button again, and then you go back to Steam Link. Now, pressing the three lines menu on the left side of the controller will make you access this. But this time, since we're using Steam Link, we don't use the Oculus software to change your resolution and such. To do to change the resolution and the refresh rate, you see this VR icon that says VR settings. Click on that, and you would be able to change the refresh rate from here. Like for me, I do 80 hertz, change it to custom, and change it to 100% resolution per eye. You can also change the advanced settings to make it to show, and we can change it so we can turn off Steam VR Home which I will do and then you gotta connect to the thing again just click connect again now you're back to steam VR and this time I have the steam VR home off now you can go back to VR settings and then we can change all of this you can change your background I would choose this one because it looks better controller binding settings are over here if you click manage controller bindings oops then we can change our control bindings over here steam link settings are over here and then you can change the target bandwidth I'll just do 350 encoded video size I put this to the max Encryption, I usually have it off. You can also turn on hand tracking pass through. So I'll show you what hand tracking would look like. So we can just go to the Oculus button over here, go to settings, movement tracking, and you can turn on hand and body tracking over here. Make sure you turn on double tap controls for hand tracking. So if you double tap the controls like this, it will change it to hand tracking. So you'll be able to change this. And then you'll be able to use the pinching zoom. Hold on. You can pinch the zoom by doing this. I pinch, sorry, pinch to press a button by doing that. Make sure your controllers aren't moving at the same time when you're using the hand tracking. By the way, oh, there we go. So you just pinch to press a button. If you go back to Steam Link and then click resume, now our controllers look like these weird dots. <laughs> So just pinch, if you see this, if you put your hand like this, you'll see the three lines. If you pinch, and that's how you would be able to access that. If, you're if you put your hand like this on the right on your right hand, and then you pinch, you'll be able to press the Oculus button. Do it again, and you'll go back to the Oculus dashboard. Now, at this point, you can basically do whatever you want. I can take my controllers again, and it will connect my controllers back to the three lines. We can go to the home page over here and then we can now open whatever game we want that's in VR. You can go to desktop one to go to your desktop over here. We also have desktop two. And if you click this add desktop window button, we can add another desktop window just like in the Oculus software. We can see BS manager over here. So we can just add this in and then we see this. You can always close the overlay, clean that. Now we're back to where we were. And that's about it guys. Thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.